Texas at the old Comanche Crossing here on the Rio Grande. I have a neighborhood picnic and the neighborhood has a river in the middle of it. For millennium, for more years than we can imagine, people have been camping on both sides of the water, setting up places to live and to do a little agriculture. And this happens to be one of the great crossings, an easy place to cross the river. You can walk across, you can ride a horse across, you can take cattle drives across. This border and the people that lived on each side for years, I mean, I didn't grow up here. I'm originally from near Philadelphia. It was a community. We all helped each other, the people on the Mexican side, all the families. And after 9-11, they really cracked down and this became a real, actual offense to cross the border and it separated families. This was off limits, which completely affected the economy on the Mexican side and on the Texas side as well, but not as much. Um, San Carlos, which is about 15 miles uh, up the Sierra from Paso Lejitas was very dependent on the economy, the Texas economy. So after that was closed. After that was closed, basically everything shut down on the other side of the river. Businesses, there was grocery stores. And restaurants. Restaurants, a lot of people lived there. It was Businesses on both I sides mean, that depended on each other. It was basically all together and now, you know, it's just... They closed the border and it broke everyone's heart. And a few years went by and we decided to have a little gathering. And uh, it's an act of civil disobedience. We're breaking the law here, I believe. Mother and sons have not hugged for 10, 11 years. Get to meet here on this day and see each other face to face. Give a hug, enjoy a cerveza. And the rest of us enjoy brotherhood amongst men and women. Today is a very good day. People are enjoying themselves. People are embracing each other. Family members that are normally cut off from seeing each other get to see each other. We all swim in the Rio Bravo and the Rio Grande. Everybody gets wet, has a good time. This is the sixth year that we've had this party that we call a Fiesta Protesta, where we set up a PA system on both sides of the border. And we sing for Mexico, they sing for us. And we all share food in celebration of the day that we get our port of entry open again. to that side than it is for them to cross to our side. That white entitlement that works in my favor whether I like it or not. All these families you see here, all those red t-shirts, they, they, they've got, that's family on both sides of the river. That's family pride. My cousin, um, it, it was a decade to see her parents um, and she got to see them, that was the, about three years ago. And then the same with my sister, she only gets to see them once a year at this event. This is the only way that they can see each other once a year. Otherwise, it's just by phone. I was originally born in San Carlos in Mexico, but right now I live in Midland, Texas. I used to live here in Lajitas when I was young, and I remember Every week when my mom and I, we would cross the border here. Yes, every single weekend and go to Mexico. But now, I mean, it's very hard. We're born in Alpine and we hang out here and most of my friends lived in Paso Lajitas. And when we were kids, I mean, we used to hang out and cross the border every day just to hang out with our friends. And they used to have a, you know, horseback riding back yeah. over there. And also rodeos, restaurants, rodeos. And uh, stuff that people would go across just to go watch and it cost you five dollars to cross the river and have fun, you know. And border culture, how it's two countries, two cultures that were blended down here into a unique thing that was the same. 
Texas is the same as Chihuahua. Chihuahua is the same as Texas. After 911, the following Mother's Day, and you, got, you can't tell me this isn't orchestrated, the following Mother's Day was the day that they started arresting people that have been going back and forth on, across this 40, 50 foot border for you know a long time. To be honest with you, if there were some, uh, if, if there were terrorists coming through Mexico, they're not going to make it through Mexico to get here. Like they're, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not going to make it. They're not going to even make it this far. festival we did here, uh, no one knew it was going to happen. Everyone was fearful. Uh, we came down to the river, everybody, the Mexicans stayed on their side, we were on this side. The United States Border Patrol had agents walking around here. And at some point, and we were throwing frisbees across the river, and at some point somebody said, let's pull those Border Patrol out of there because all of a sudden they were gone. They went up to the highway and they stayed on the highway the rest of the day. And the second year they weren't there at all. There's been no presence. Um, and we're grateful for that. We invite the Border Patrol, we invite the Sheriff's Department every year. We invite everybody down here. We're not trying to hide anything. We just want our port of entry open so that we can go over there, they can come over here. I'm very thankful that the Border Patrol and the Sheriff's Department allows it to even happen. They could be assholes and shut it down. They could show up here with yeah, assault here rifles, they could be assholes, but they let it happen. So far they haven't tried to shoot us or put us in jail. And so they decided this isn't a battle they want to fight, I guess. People have been using this crossing for a long, long time. And it's hard for us to understand this dotted line on a piece of paper that lays down the rules for the ones on this side of the dotted line and lays down the rules for that side of the dotted line. And these rules are so intensely different. Anytime we get division, it does something to humankind in small, you know, in communities or whatever. We didn't know these people for, the, for 10, 12 years. We didn't know these people. Then we started reaching out. We started doing this fiesta. You know what? I've got probably 10 friends over in St. Carlos, I would say, that I could spend a night over their place. I, I could share food with them or whatever. They can't come over here at this point because they don't have papers. But it, when they did, they would be welcome over at my place. And we would share food. We would play music. And we would do the things that we do over here. Man, there's not a wall they're talking about building down here. They're talking about facial recognition software and stuff. And you know what? There's an element on either side of this border, any border. There's an element on either side of it that you don't want to be involved in. And there's an element that you want to be involved in. That's a much bigger part than the part you don't want to be involved in. Trump's not the only person that's that's been the threat. He's not the only one. So uh, to place it on Trump, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. But to place all of these pre-existing problems on him, I, I don't think that's the right way to go about it. Trump just sent a lot of National Guard to the border. People are in uproar. Of course I disagree with that, but Obama did that too. George Bush did that. Other people did that. So it's not, it's not just Trump. That's too easy. It's been amazing and it, it always is. There hasn't been any trouble at all these last six years and I don't think there there will be. I hope that they open this crossing right here so maybe you know it'll be easier for our families that can see each other more often. <laughs> Para Rito, para Minero, compadre.